Hey what's up guys, welcome to a complete and updated Changling guide. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the strongest characters in Genshin Impact and how to use them properly. We're going to be covering Changling's best builds, teams, and rotations so that you can get the most value out of your character. Shangling is a character who was long underrated and somewhat recently people have been starting to understand the true potential behind this amazing character. She's not only a great free to play unit but also the best 4 star carry and just one of the best carries in the game. On top of that she can be a great support and very recently she got a sort of indirect buff which is why I'm making this video. What I mean by that is a new artifact set and new weapons have come out that are available to all players with the weapon being free to play and this new build makes her even stronger than she was before and so I want to cover everything that you need to know about Shangling. In one video. With that being said, I want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. Be sure to subscribe if you're new and shout out to ZJF77 for helping me with the math on her weapon ranking. First of all, for her talents, her elemental skill is pretty straightforward. You drop this bear called Guoba, who just kind of sits there and deals pyro damage. The damage he deals is honestly not bad, but while he is cute, he's also kind of dumb and misses a lot or just like doesn't really move and enemies can escape him. But the most important part of this ability isn't so much the damage, more as the particles that it generates every time it hits an enemy. So even even if he's hitting like the wrong enemy, as long as he hits someone, he'll be generating particles for you, which is really good. For your elemental burst, this is the core of Shang Ling's kit. This is why she's so broken as a pyro carry. Now I know there's some people who play her as a physical carry with like Crescent Pike and stuff, but there's a reason why pyro Shang Ling is so much better, and that's because of this pyro nato. The scaling on this ability is insane, 224% every swing at level 12, which is just level 9 plus constellations, but even at lower levels, the pyro nato just does an insane amount of damage lasts a very long time, and has some very important properties that make it very good. What I mean by that is, first of all, it has no internal cooldown, meaning that it can apply Pyro on every hit, which allows it to proc reactions on every hit. That means that if the enemy is afflicted by Hydro or Cryo, it will either vaporize or melt every single hit, since there is no internal cooldown. On top of that, it's an ability that snapshots. While I've explained this previously, snapshotting basically just means that your ability will factor in all the buffs given to it for the entire duration. This is absolutely huge since not only does it last for a very long time, but that means that you don't have to worry about any buffs expiring, you can use it at the end of your Bennett Burst, or you can walk out of your Bennett Burst, you can give Thrilling Tales, you can just amplify this ability's damage so much and it'll keep it for the entire duration. In fact, that duration is 10 seconds or 14 seconds with her fourth constellation, which is amazing, and the cooldown is 20 seconds with an energy cost of 80. This 80 energy cost can seem high, but as long as you run enough energy recharge, and especially if you manage your particles efficiently, with a good rotation, especially if you pair her with a pyro battery like Bennett, you can effectively be able to spam this burst on cooldown very easily, making her a super powerful pyro carry. Your passive talents aren't really things you need to worry about too much. The first one uh, makes your Guoba a bit better, and your second talent makes Guoba drop a chili pepper when he disappears, when he leaves, which increases your attack by 10%, which is nice, but usually isn't the biggest deal, uh, but obviously if you see it, pick it up. For your talent priority, it's very important to max your Pyronado, get it as high level as you can, first of all, then after that you can level your elemental skill, don't neglect your Guoba, uh, and then for your normal attacks, usually, um, honestly, you're not going to be normal attacking too much with Shangling, even if she is your main DPS, because there is a specific rotation you're going to be following, that I'll cover in the next section, where you're not really normal attacking too much, and if you are, it's not doing that much, however, you can still get it to level 6 if you want, and if for some reason you're running a physical Shangling, obviously level this up, but generally Generally speaking, Pyro is much better. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about how to actually build this character. Usually I start by talking about artifacts, but in today's video, I want to talk about our weapons first of all. The reason for that is because the new polearm, the catch, is one of the reasons why I'm making this video and it's an absolutely broken weapon. This is not only the best free to play option, right, because you can get it for free and refine it for free with the fishing event, but it's also just the best 4 star option and it's honestly better than a lot of 5 stars. This weapon is literally like a free 5 star for Shangling and it's a weapon then you should definitely be using. The reason why it's so good is because, first of all, the energy recharge substat is amazing, 45% at level 90 is huge, and it's a stat that Chang Ling usually needs to get her burst back on cooldown. On top of that, when you pair this with the Emblem of Severed Fate set, this 45% ER will be converted into damage in a way that this 45% plus the 20% you get from the Emblem of Severed Fate 2 piece, which we'll talk about uh, in a little, gives you a total of 165 energy recharge without needing any on your artifacts. Not only is that a good amount to, you know, start being able to get your burst back on cooldown, but it also gives you 41% burst damage from the Emblem of Severed Fate effect just from your energy recharge. On top of that, the catch itself gives you 32% elemental burst damage and increases your elemental burst crit rate by 12%. For a character like Shang Ling, whose damage is mostly coming from her burst, like the vast majority of her damage is her Pyronado, this 32% 
plus 12% crit rate is absolutely huge. Because of that, this is the weapon I recommend for basically every player, but I do want to cover an exact weapon ranking of Shangling, go into a bit more detail, talk about alternatives, what can be better than the catch, and give you guys an exact weapon ranking because we did do the math on all of them. So first of all, I want to keep things simple by saying that, generally speaking, the catch is your go-to option. Some 5 stars like Staff of Homa or Engulfing Lightning can be very slightly better or can be a viable alternative if you're using the catch on another character. Other good options that aren't the catch include Deathmatch, which can be great for a lot of crit rate, a good effect, and can be nice if you don't need the energy recharge that the catch provides you with, because that is one of the things that makes this weapon so good. If you already have more than enough ER, something like Deathmatch can be amazing. Same thing goes with basically every 5 star, including including things like the Jade's Wing Spear and the Vortex Vanquisher. For 4 star options, a Dragon's Bane, especially at R5, is absolutely amazing if you are vaporizing, and similar in strength to a Deathmatch. And then Favonius Lance and Blackcliff Pole are decent options, with the new Blacksmith weapon, the Kitten or Katane Spear, I don't know how to pronounce it, being your best free to play option if you don't have the catch. Overall, this is what the weapon ranking looks like. It is on screen now, there are some assumptions, I'll try to explain a few of them right now. First of all, this does change on not only your substats, right, how much ER, how much crit and stuff, you have, but also based on your team comps. If you're running Sucrose or Kazua, which are two very popular supports for Shangling, the exact weapon ranking can change slightly. Now this weapon ranking should be mainly used as a general idea because there are a lot of factors that can change the exact positioning, but generally speaking, these are how good every weapon is. You can see there's a lot of good options. Also, while these weapon rankings are calculated with high energy recharge, not only is that needed for most casual rotations, although you can definitely get away with less, and I'll talk about that later in the video, but ER weapons with the emblem set already give you like 165-ish, and for weapons that don't have energy recharge, you can oftentimes run an energy recharge sands and then crit on your substance instead of running an attack sands or em sands and go for energy recharge on the substats so then you're gaining like attack instead of crit which is usually worse especially when you pair shangling with someone like bennett overall though i want to sum it up by saying that you have many good options for example all the five stars are great and there are many good four stars with the catch being the best one and what i recommend overall for most players now with the weapon out of the way i want to talk about shangling's best artifact sets since my last shangling video a new set came out which is the emblem of severed fate set this set is made for characters whose burst damage is is the main source of their damage, so for characters like Shang Ling. Not only will the two-piece give you 20% energy recharge, which is the equivalent of three to four substats, so if you need it, it's amazing, but on top of that, the four-piece is great. This four-piece will convert 25% of your total energy recharge into elemental burst damage. Now, while this doesn't mean that you should stack energy recharge on every piece, it does mean that you'll get a ton of burst damage. For example, as I mentioned earlier in the weapon section, if you're running the catch, which gives you 45 ER, and the emblem of a severed fate set, which gives you 20%, that is already 100 165% energy recharge, which gives you over 40% damage to your burst, making it already amazing. On top of that, if you have any energy recharge substats, you'll just be gaining more damage, making it an even better set than the alternatives. Now that being said, the best set for you can depend on many factors, for example your substats, because there are a lot of other good options that I'm going to cover, and there are situations where the Crimson Witch of Flame set, if you are overloading and vaporizing in a Raiden Shogun team, this set can potentially out DPS it. So overall, I recommend the Emblem of Severed Fate set for Shangling, even if you're somewhere like 135 or 140 ER, your damage will not only be similar to another set, but even if it is slightly lower, the 20% ER you get on the two-piece saves you three to four substats. Other good sets include the two-piece Noblesse Oblige for 20% burst damage, paired with two-piece Crimson Witch of Flames for 15% power damage, or four-piece Crimson Witch of Flames being especially good if you are vaporizing, and best in slot if you're both vaporizing and overloading, since it increases all your reaction damage by a significant amount. And the two-piece Wanders is also a pretty good two-piece for L Mental mastery. Overall, I'm going to include some numbers on screen now, just showing that all of these sets are viable, but the emblem set is usually the best, especially if you pair it with the catch. That being said, I highly recommend you run whichever set you have that has better substats, since those are very important. Next up, we're going to talk about the specific artifact stats that you want on Chang Ling. First of all, as I mentioned, energy recharge is a must to spam your burst on cooldown. The exact amount you need, though, is something that we'll cover, but it highly depends on many factors. Other than ER, you're going to be looking for crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and and also elemental mastery is nice if you are vaporizing or proccing reactions. In terms of how much energy recharge you need, because this is a question that I get asked a lot, it highly depends on your rotation, your team comps, your weapon, and just a lot of factors. Overall though, as a DPS, once you have the catch, 
and the two-piece emblem of severed fate, you no longer need more energy recharge. Now for the exact energy recharge you need on Changling, if for some reason you're not running this weapon and the emblem set, if you're playing super optimally and funneling particles into your Changling non-stop, you can get away with a pretty low amount, like 135 to 140. However, for most players, I recommend more, especially if you're playing casually, to where 150 to 180 is a good range. But obviously test it out and run whatever works for you. For your specific main stats, you obviously want a crit circlet and a pyro damage goblet because they will just give you the most damage. Damage. And for your circlet, while it can be either crit rate or crit damage, do keep in mind that the uh, catch gives you this 12% crit rate bonus to your burst that you don't want to be forgetting about. So you're effectively gaining a bit more crit rate than you might think when you just check your attributes. So do keep that in mind when picking your circlet since you are trying to get a 1 to 2 ratio, being 2 crit damage for every 1 crit rate. For your sands, this is where it can get more complicated. To keep things simple, I'm just going to summarize it as attack percent is the most damage, elemental mastery is also a good alternative for some damage, and energy recharge is great if you're a support or need more energy recharge. That being said, I want to make it clear that even if you're running the emblem set, going for an attack percent sands will give you more damage than an ER sands, even despite this set converting some of your ER into damage. So a good way to sum this up is by recommending attack percent or Elemental Mastery Sands if you already have enough energy recharge. If your weapon gives you energy recharge like the catch, then you won't need an energy recharge sands. But if you're running a more offensive weapon like Deathmatch or Staff of Homa, something that gives you crit or attack percent, then you can just run an energy recharge sands and not have to worry about it on your substats as much. Overall though, if you already have enough energy recharge, especially if you're running something like the catch, I recommend going for either an attack percent sands or elemental mastery, both of which are really good. Obviously, elemental mastery is only good if you're proccing reactions, and then attack percent is just generally good, and so you can use usually pick based on whichever one you have that has better substats, with attack percent being the more universal option. On top of that, if you are running Shangling as a pure support, where she just uses her Pyrodato and basically stays off field, doesn't really collect too many particles, you will need a lot more energy recharge, somewhere around the 200 range, to where an energy recharge sands is needed. For Shangling's constellations, the main ones you want to go for are your third and fourth constellation. Shangling C4 is one of the best fourth constellations in the game because it increases your Pyronado's duration by 40%, so a whole 4 seconds, making it last for 14 out of the 20 uh, second cooldown. That means it only has a 6 second downtime and will greatly increase your overall DPS since your Pyronado is like your main source of damage. This is the most important constellation by far, your third constellation is also good because it increases uh, your Pyronado's levels, and your other constellations aren't the biggest of deals, uh, but your C1 is nice, it reduces some pyro resistance when Guoba hits them. Your second constellation only buffs your normal attacks, which usually doesn't do that much since you very rarely uh, complete your whole normal attack sequence. Your fifth constellation increases Guoba's talent level, which is pretty nice, and then your sixth constellation is kind of whatever. Basically, while your Pyronado is active, you'll gain a Pyro damage bonus, which is really nice in like a mono Pyro team. If you pair Shangling with other Pyro units, then this constellation becomes very good, but it does not buff Shangling's Pyronado herself. So that's an important thing to remember. Your own Pyronado won't get that 15% Pyro damage bonus because it is an ability that snapshots, and so it won't buff itself. It will, however, buff your Shangling's Guoba if you use it after your Pyronado, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Overall, and I know I talked fast in this section, but Shangling does have very good constellations, especially her fourth one, which is absolutely amazing, but she is a character who's great at C0, so you should definitely use her even if you don't have her fourth constellation. Now, while her talents may have seemed somewhat simple, her rotations and how to play her actually is a bit more complex, or at least you need to know what you're doing a bit more than other characters in order to get the maximum amount of damage from her. What I mean by that is since her burst, for example, snapshots, you want to be sure to use all your buffs before your Shangling's Pyronado, like Bennett's Burst, Noblesse Oblige, Sucrose's Thrilling Tales, or anything else you can be running with Shangling to ensure that her burst does get buffed. On top of that, when you run her with a character like Bennett, who is the best support for her, something you can do to be able to get away with a lot lower energy recharge than you normally would is funnel particles efficiently. The way you do that is by using your elemental skill on Bennett and then immediately swapping into Shangling right after while the pyro particles are like traveling so that you catch them on Shangling, giving her more energy. So since this is a very detailed guide, I want to break down an exact rotation and walk you through what I'm doing. In this example, I'm going to be using uh, arguably Shangling's best four star team, a really good one where you pair her with Singchu, Bennett, and Sucrose. We'll talk about this in the team section, but a lot of what I'm doing can be applied to basically every Shangling team, so we're going to get into it. First of all, something you want to do is use basically all of your buffs before Shangling's Pyronado, as I mentioned earlier. So while you can use Singchu's Rain Swords at the start in this team, uh, we're just going to start with Bennett just to show you guys uh, basically a rotation. So Bennett's burst, first of all, then you can see that applied him with Pyro, which means I'm going to swap into my Anemo character, Sucrose in this instance, to apply the Bird Essence Venator set, 
and by swirling that pyro, I will give elemental mastery to my Shangling through her passives. On top of that, since I am running Thrilling Tales on her, and since you oftentimes should be when you pair her with Shangling, you want to make sure to swap it to Shangling after your Sucrose to give that attack percent to her. So I'm going to swirl this pyro, then swap into my Shangling, then I can use my Pyronado, which will snapshot all those buffs, uh, and then I just want to make sure to apply Hydro constantly, while you weave in some elemental skills on Bennett to give Pyro Particles to your Shangling. Now, as long as Bennett's burst is active, uh, you'll be... Oh, I killed him. Basically, in order to give the maximum amount of Particles to your Shangling, you want to be spamming your elemental skill on Bennett while you weave in some normal attacks to apply Sinkchu's Rain Swords, swapping into Shangling to catch those Pyro Particles, rinsing and repeating. If you're running Child instead of Sinkchu, you can auto attack on Child, applying the Hydro while the Pyro Nado vaporizes, and then during Child's downtime, his skill's cooldown, you're going to be funneling Particles to your Shangling. Overall, you want to make sure you're applying Hydro fast enough so that your Shangling can vaporize her Pyro Nado swings, while simultaneously funneling Particles into her so that she can run on lower energy recharge or if she just doesn't have enough. Lastly, I did want to add as a bonus in case you're confused as to why Bennett can generate so many particles. Basically, inside of his elemental burst, his elemental skill has a very short cooldown because of his passives. This passive will reduce the cooldown of his skill by 50% when he's inside of his burst and then the other passive talent decreases his skill uh, just by 20% overall, which means that you can literally spam this ability very, very fast and it does generate 2-3 to three pyro particles that you can catch on Shangling to allow her to get her 80 energy cost burst back without a problem. So now I want to get into one of the most important sections of the video, Shangling's team comps. First of all, I want to say that while she wants to be paired with Bennett, other than that slot, there are many different teams that can utilize her in a variety of different ways, so her team comps are quite flexible. That being said, she does really want to be paired with Bennett. I already explained why in this video, so I'm not going to go over it again, but basically he just gives you a ton of attack that Shangling can snapshot. He's an amazing healer, gives you a bunch of pyro particles, and on top of that, uh, he does give you the pyro resonance, which increases your attack by 25%, which is just pretty nice. So honestly, I think Shangling is probably the unit in the game that wants Bennett the most, which is why I always put my Bennett on my Shangling team and then use a different healer for my other half. Other than just Bennett though, Shangling synergizes well with many different characters. First of all, Hydro characters like Sing Chu and Child, who can apply Hydro very fast with their attacks, while Child with his normal attacks and Sing Chu with his Rain Swords are very good for Shangling. Shangling's best four star team and one of her best teams overall is this one right here. Uh, the last character is sort of flex, but Shangling, Bennett, Sing Chu, and Sucrose is amazing, and I showed the rotation earlier in the video. The last character is a flex slot. Someone like Chong Yun is another good 4 star option. Other Animo characters like Kazua can be great and Raiden can actually be one of the best options here, especially at high investment since she does give you energy back with her burst, allowing your Sing Chu to be ran without even a sacrificial sword. And as you can see, while she's auto attacking, Shang Ling's gonna be vaporizing and overloading, dealing a ton of damage, scaling very well off of her elemental mastery, and your Raiden's gonna be dealing like additional damage to your Shang Ling and Sing Chu's, making it a very powerful comp at high investment. Other than this team, uh, one of my favorite Shang Ling comps is pairing her with Child. Child has really good synergy with Shang Ling, because while he's on field auto attacking, not only is he dealing a lot of damage with his Riptide, his Burst, and his auto attacks, but he's also applying Hydro extremely fast, allowing your Shangling to be the true carry to vaporize all her Pyronado hits from off field. So in this team comp, while Child does a lot of damage, he's mainly acting as an enabler, while your Shangling literally just vaporizes massive numbers. So this is a really good team comp, and as with the last one, the last slot is quite flexible. Kazuo is usually the best, but obviously Sucrose, even Zhongli, and other options can work. Other good teams. Uh, and one of my favorite four star teams is this reverse melt quick swap where Shangling is going to be applying pyro very fast and then Rosaria and Kaya will be melting just a ton of damage from this quick swap team and since their bursts do snapshot Bennett is buffing every single character here and you are playing a sort of quick swappy style where every character is using their skill then their burst and then just swapping out. Another very good team comp is this mono pyro team and Shangling is good in general in pyro teams on top of that in this example mono pyro comp having Venti and Kazuo constantly swirling with Shang Ling's Pyronado not only infusing your swirls with Pyro but also just dealing massive damage. This is a very good team comp. On top of that, you can also run Shangling as a support, you know, like example in a Ganyu team that wants to be melting. You can run Ganyu with Bennett and Shangling, and then Shangling's gonna be applying Pyro from off field while your Ganyu can melt her charge attacks. Do keep in mind that in a Ganyu team though, and in other teams where Shangling is off field the entire time, she will need much higher energy recharge than when she's played as a carry. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the DPS showcase where I'm just gonna be doing a floor 12 
12 clear using a four star only team. I'm going to be running Shangling in the sort of national team, running her with Singchu, Bennett, and Sucrose. And my Shangling is obviously on the catch with a 69 155 ratio with a lot of energy recharge. And the reason I'm using a four star team that you guys are going to see is mainly to let my Shangling shine and to give you guys an idea of, you know, a four star team with a four star weapon, although I do have really good artifacts. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the guide and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. So yeah, there really was a lot to cover in this video. I hope I made this guide as detailed as possible and showed you guys how to build and play Shangling properly. This video took way too long to make because I was being super like perfectionist about it and I really wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything. So I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave some feedback, ask any questions or whatever in the comments down below. But yeah, overall Shangling's an amazing pyro carry, great support as well. And she now has an amazing free to play weapon and an amazing new artifact set. So a great new build for just an already powerful character. But yeah, that's about it. My semester just started, so I gotta go back to prepping that but i do have a lot of videos planned so stay tuned for those be sure to subscribe if you're new if you want to follow me on twitch join the discord all that stuff you can and with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next one peace